All right, folks, let's hit it off with our first article, which is about bioprinting tissue during surgery. And this is coming out of Penn State University, Dr. Ibrahim Ozbalat. Um, he's a professor of engineering, science, and mechanics. And basically what he's done is found a method to 3D print to fix traumatic injuries to the face and head. He prints the tissue in the place. So if there's a hole in your face or skull, it's actually really, really difficult right now to solve that issue in surgery. So it requires a lot of materials. It actually requires donor bone. So it has to be taken either from a, like a living donor or from a cadaver. They need to take bone and soft tissue, cut it to the right shape, make sure that it fits, and then put it back in that hole in your face or skull. And the th reason why it's especially complicated on your face is because like that's your money maker. You want your face to be aesthetically pleasing. Can't you mess can't this easily up. cover it up. Yeah, you you don't want to mess up this beautiful face. Yeah. So <laughs> the results have to be aesthetically pleasing. So what Professor Osbalat's team looked at is can we 3D print in place instead of having to cut the bone and cut all these materials, just print in the hole and fix it right there where it is. All right, so there was, uh, what was this, episode four now? I think like yeah. oh, three, three, over three months ago. Yeah. We kind of talked about this, and I think it was at a Carnegie Mellon. They had developed a way to 3D print organic material, but it had to be in a hydrogel because if it wasn't, it would collapse. Have, have they gotten around this, or does it yeah, suffer well, from the same issue? There, There's two parts to this printing. Okay. The first part is printing the bone, and they can actually 3D print hard tissue, so you, you don't have to suspend it in a gel or anything like that. So the okay. hard tissue, they print the bone, it works fine. Um, this same issue you're talking about, though, where when they're printing the soft tissue, it's kind of liquidy, and they want to make sure that it r holds the geometry that they want. What they do is they've basically been printing thin layers of it in a mist. They spray a thin mist over it, and then they spray another chemical called a crosslinker that allows those polymers to cure in place. Okay. So every few sense. layers, they're curing them. Um, so they don't need this hydrogel support like you were talking about with the Carnegie Mellon research. Well, once it cures, does it turn into like a hard object, like like hard tissue or... No, it's, it stays gelatinous. I mean, okay. if you look at the research, I was looking at some photos of it. It basically looks like jello. Okay. Um, and so it kind of makes this jello type material that stays where it's supposed to, has the geometry it's supposed to, and it stays in place. So but, the, does the jello and the hard tissue underneath it that were printed, is that the new tissue now? Well, let me walk you through like the, the full okay. process of what happens, and I think that'll explain it. So first, say I've got an injury or I've had surgery or whatever, that I have a hole in my skull. Um, say I just got a link from Neuralink installed, and I decide I don't want it. So how do we repair this hole in my head? Um, the first thing they do is they 3D scan it. So they figure out where the bone is supposed to be, where the skin is supposed to be, what's mm -hmm. missing, and what's the shape of this thing they're going to print. Okay, so then they go in, they print the hard tissue, which is the bone, okay. and the thing that they're printing, that filament, is actually, it contains collagen, chitosan, and stem cells, basically all the precursor materials that are necessary for bone to grow there, and it's kind of I a see. scaffolding. So then they do a 3D scan again, and they say, okay, so we've got the bone in place, how much soft tissue do we need to print? And by soft tissue, they're basically replicating where the skin should be. And then they go in and they inject, they spray these inks and they cure it in place. The final product, they've got this 3D printed bone with kind of a gelatinous material on top that fully plugs the hole that was in your head. All right. So correct me if I'm wrong. The hard tissue 3D print is going to give a scaffold for the actual bone to grow through, right? Yeah. And then you have the jelly stuff on top. And, and that's like, it has all the mixtures required to actually have tissue regenerate with it. Exactly. So they're not okay. they're not printing bone and they're not printing skin. But what they are doing is providing some structural support and really providing the, the important part is providing the cell tissue, all the extra nutrients, all the proteins, all the enzymes that are necessary for the healing to happen there in an efficient manner, an efficient manner. So the analogy I'd like to liken to is it's like planting a seed in some soil that's in a like climate that. controlled environment with all the light, all the water that's needed, all the air, all the nutrients, it's making it as easy as possible for the body to heal. And the results of it show. So 
in the first 10 days, the skin had completely healed over about 80% of the uh, 80% of the mice that they tested it in. Okay. And within four weeks, all the skin on every single mouse that they tested, they tested 50 of them, 100% of those soft tissues had completely healed. So that jelly thing wasn't there anymore. There That's wasn't impressive. an open wound. The skin had completely healed in four weeks. And I can imagine, like, having a hole, um, you know... <laughs> With like this gelatinous not tissue that it, that it fully heals within four weeks is pretty insane. Yeah. Um, talking about the bone as well, within six weeks, 80% of them had completely closed as well. So that level of bone growth, that level of skin growth is only possible because of they're basically providing perfect conditions for the body to heal in that place. Now, I, I guess a different application of this is like maybe even burn victims, not for the hard tissue, but for the soft tissue. If, if you could lay the groundwork for the tissue to heal like in the best conditions possible that this could be a great application of that too right exactly it it seals up the wound well mm -hmm. um, protects it from outside environment but it also gives every single thing that they need um they meaning the cells in the body to heal and to regrow in that spot i think it's a huge step forward and i'm excited to see this being applied in you know multiple realms of healthcare, not just in you know the face and skull surgery area even though that's obviously ridiculously and important you said it they've only tested on mice now right yeah only only mice so far um and the results basically are comparable if not better than current methods with using bone grafts and using skin grafts so um I think it looks promising. I'd be excited to see this applied in Same. clinical applications and trials moving forward. Especially if one of us gets a, you know, an injury on our faces, we, we can't give this up. Not, not for Instagram. You know, we got to yeah, make those IGTV. Yeah, especially ears, man. Gotta, yeah, I know. Got to keep it pretty. <laughs> All right. Um, 